ವರ್ಣಿವೇಶರಮಣೀಯದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾನಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಘನಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಆಲ್ ಮೈಟಿ ಅವರ್ ಬಿಲೌಡ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಟೋಲಿ ಬ್ರೇಸನ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಅನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಡಿಟೀಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಹಿಂಸ ಸೇಜ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವಚನಾಮೃತ್ ಗಿರಡ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಈವನ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ who has to pass throughout his life as a poor man but if any how any means he get a pleasure of bhagwan sekantik sant then the same person is attain the happiness like that of a great tycoon or even more than that that person can enjoy the happiness and pleasure and all wealth and property and status everything like that of a king this is what bhagwan swami narayan shows us the divine power and greatness of his ekantik son there were many incident happened at the time of bhagwan swami narayan as well as after that even at present time such kind of incident happen but only if we observe the life of ekantik sat the life of ekantik sat purush we have attained then we easily realize that even such kind of incident happen at this present time at the time of bhagwan swami narayan there was many many santos among them Sadguru Gunadita Nand Swami Swami stay there in Junagadh because of Bhagwan's command and Swami preached there the real principle and greatness meaning supremacy of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and all the other great aspect of satsang so many santo also live there at the time there is no water gas electricity facility in india so santo would like to go outside in every morning for bath and other other ritual so gunaditanand swami and the group of santo they went to narayan dharo there was a natural pool which was sanctified by bhagwan swami narayan as a nilkanth varni form so understanding the greatness and sanctity of this holy place gunatanand swami and santo the every day went there for morning bath once upon a time there was a time of winter so naturally the water of the pool that was very cold but santo had a niyam and they did not understand this body as the true form they realized that this is this body is not my true form but i am totally different from this body and that's why gunatidanand swami and other santo they once took bath into this cool water of the pool and when they came back to mandir but on the route Sadguru Gunaditanand Swami's body because of age he was shivering and after few minutes Swami fell down unconsciously so all the other santo they find out they they were searching for some firewood so that they can lead they can fire the wood and because of fire's heat Swami can came back in consciousness at the same time there was a small family whose business was to every day go to the jungle and cut a big 
wooden block into small pieces with the axe and tied those small pieces of wood with the rope and came back to the city and by selling this small wooden block as a firewood they earned their bread on every such day when they were failed to sell their wooden block at that time they have to do fast for the whole day because they were very very poor they have no any sufficient grains and no sufficient even any kind of food in their home and the the other thing is that in that family there were only three persons one mother and two her children one is boy and the other boy's sister <coughs> so they also came back from the jungle in the morning and while from very far distance that family they saw that one swaminarayan sadhu he was fell unconscious and this was a time of winter so they definitely need some firewood so the mother even the family was muslim still the mother sent her child to the santo now the boy came to santo santo was already f- searching for some firewood and he asked santo are you searching for firewood i have firewood so if you don't mind then could you please use my firewood then santo say yes but what's your name and how you come here he said don't worry about that my mother sent me because we find out you that you are searching for some firewood and swami he fell unconscious that's why then santo asked uh santo said okay go there and come back with the uh, firewoods so the boy came there with firewoods and santo lead them and after some time because of heating swami came back in consciousness after uh, during this time the other santo they asked the boy what was his name the boy said my name is bahudin but most of the people here in the city they call me as a bavlo as swami came back in consciousness swami saw all all of his sights there were firewood and in front of him there was a small child swami asked him what are uh, what are your name what wh- what is your name then uh, the boy replied swami i am bavlo actually my name was bahudin but people call me as bavlo then santo introduced santo gave all of information regarding this bavlo to swami and santo pleaded swami he was very poor and more than that he had uh, lost his father when he was only one year old so now there uh, santo uh, describe all of his situation and they finally prayed to swami so please do something so that they even at least get some food every day then swami asks few questions to the boy swami asks baula now you have given all of your firewoods here for santo now did you not think for your bread meaning did you not think for the earning your food for today then bavlo said no swami my mother teach me that you are a god realized son 
And if I, uh, if we use our wood for you, then that's good for our own self, and that's why we use our wood for your uh, in your use. Just as many days, if we fail to sell our firewood, then we have to do fast. In the same way, today, we happily do fast because we have used our own firewood for one of Bhagwan's Ekantik son. In this way, after getting such a reply from the Bhavala, Gunaditya and Swami become very pleased upon him. And Swami said, Okay, don't worry. Now, Bhagwan, I will pray to my, uh, Bhagwan and he will definitely care about your situation. But, uh, from today, you do not need to go every day into the jungle and cut the big wooden log into small pieces. You don't need from today. Now, according to Gunadi and Swami's words, what happened? Santo came back to the mandir and after that, on the other hand, this Baolo and his mother and his sister, they came back to their small hut because they have, uh, they have used all of their firewoods for Swami. Now they have no any other scope to earn money for getting some food. But after the day, after some hours pass, at the time, there was a Muslim king who ruled the kingdom. And one of his prince, he came back from the jungle after hunting with his friends. And uh, as this family, Baolo and his mother and his sister, they were uh, lived in very small hut. At the same time, Baolo's sister, he was, uh, uh, she was sweeping the ground and that prince saw her, so he decided to marry with her. Now, after coming back to his palace, that prince sent his men to the hut of this Baolo and he invited all, these, all of the members of the, his family. Now, as Bablo, along with his mother and his sister, came back to the palace, the prince proposed for the marriage. And this family also accepted his propose. And after the marriage, uh, the prince also made provision for staying of Bablo and his mother in the palace. Not only that, but even the kingdom arrange all kinds of facilities for studying and education of this Bahauddin. After completing his graduation, Bahauddin became one of the secretary in the state. Now, <coughs> after that, still this time, Bahauddin didn't forget Swami's grace and blessings. And for that, he kept an axe and the rope every day with him. And while doing darshan in the morning, Bahauddin every day realized that in my future, I have to pass my day by cutting the wood and selling them. But today I am the secretary only because of Swami's grace that Swami's blessings, this is not mine. This is not my future. This is all because of Bhagwan Swaminan Sekantik Sant. Now, after some time, Bahauddin constructed and started an institution for the education purpose as a charity work. He ran a college by the name of Bahauddin College. And in his office, he kept these both things, axe and a rope, in front of his desk so that he can easily see.
see both these things every day. Whenever he sit on his seat, then at the time he easily can see this axe and rope. And by watching this axe and rope, every day and every moment he realized I am sitting in this chair only because of this axe and rope. Because to earn the blessings and earn the grace of Gunaditan and Swami, this axe and rope become helpful to me. And that's why in this way he realized that I am nothing, but this is what today I am, only because of Gunaditan and Swami's grace and blessings. So in this way, as Bhagwan Swami said in the Vachanamrit, that if one has attained the grace and blessings of Bhagwan Sekantik Sant, then that person, even though he had to beg arms or beg food from the other people, that person, after getting blessings and grace of the Ekantik Sant of Bhagwan Swami definitely become or be become happy like that of a king. So in this way, by this incident, we can understand these divine words of Bhagwan Swami and spoken in the Vachanamrut. So if in this way attain the grace and blessings of our Ekantik Satpurus we have attained in the form of Puja Guruji, then we will definitely enjoy the eternal bliss of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. By saying this Jai Swami Narayan, Sri Ganeshyam Maharajani Jai. प्रभुतव मुरति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्न जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह नजर सामी पे रहो आमारी ये हा कंशाम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे सुप्रीम ओमाइडी डी पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन ओमाइडी भगवान स्वामी नारायण आर अटमोस डियर the one who is always looking after us, like a mother, our Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Out of all the qualities of a devotee, out of all the attributes of a devotee, tolerance is such a uh, such an attribute that by keeping tolerance bhagwan's happiness automatically is showered upon us not only that but those who tolerate become great later on it may not be seen 
during the time of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, during the time of Nan Santo, and as of right now, during the time of Puja Guruji, tolerance is seen, and through that tolerance, greatness is seen. If one wants to become great in life, in the eyes of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, then one must tolerate. You're probably thinking, tolerate what? Tolerate from who? Tolerate what kind of things? Well, we have to tolerate when we do the Dilak Chanlo or do it or have a Chotli and go to school. We have to tolerate from others, those who make fun of us, those who make fun of our religion, and those who mimic us without saying anything. We forget about it and move on without becoming disturbed in our mind. That's tolerating. We have to tolerate from those who are even in satsang that want us to do certain things and we want to do other things more God-related. We want to associate with santos more and our friends in satsang want us to sit with them more. Things like that. It happens everywhere. If you think about it, every day in our life, there's always a point where we have to tolerate. If, something, if someone has said something to us or if we have said something to them that they did not feel is proper. But it occurs in our life day to day, moment by moment. Yet, those who become great tolerate, they forget, they forgive and they move on with their life. And due to that, they become great in the eyes of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So today, first and foremost, we'd like to take a look into the life of Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself and how he tolerated. Even he was Bhagwan himself, the Supreme Almighty Lord himself, yet when he comes down to this earth, he behaves as though just a mere human. And due to that, due to his uprising, due to his spread in all throughout India, many, many people hated and persecuted him. And due to that, he was insulted in many ways in many areas. Yet, Bhagwan was Bhagwan. His greatness was beyond anyone's comprehension. So he did not do anything. Yet, Let's take a look at a prasang in the life of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and how he tolerated. Insult in Anand. Anand is a village in Gujarat, India. And the title is Insult in Anand. Once Sriji Maharaj visited the town of Anand. The local devotees had enthusiastically made preparations for a welcome procession. Maharaj had arrived with a group of Paramansas and armed Kati devotees. So the devotees that were in the local town of Anand had prepared for a grand parade. Bhagwan had arrived with his santos and his devotees who were in the soldier caste. Before the, before the parade commenced, Maharaj sought a pledge from the Kati devotees. Do not use your swords or weapons, even if anyone insults us, throws bricks or flings mud, mud at us. Instead, forgive them. This is what Bhagwan said. Meaning he was giving a pre-warning. All those devotees looked around and they were wondering, what is Bhagwan talking about? We are going in such a grand parade, prepared for Bhagwan and us. This is going to be great, this is going to be grand, grand event. And what is he talking about? Or do not take out our swords. You're not supposed to take out your sword in a parade. Or do not do anything if someone hits you with a brick or flings mud at you. It's just something that's beyond comprehension. Yet, Bhagwan gave him a small hint and a command by saying this. 
Let's see what happens next. Shruji Maharaj's providing words sparked off a flurry of thoughts in everyone's mind. And Maharaj's words came true. Many of the hostile people of Anand insulted Maharaj and his company of sadhus and devotees. They bitter, they, they hur, hurtled mud, bricks, stones, dung, and rubbish as the, the procession passed through the town center. The Gati devotees suppressed their anger and, tamed, and tamely tolerated their assault. Bhagwan also stayed calm and did not do anything, though their hearts spoiled and itched with a desire to retaliate. They abided by their pledge to Maharaj. Sriji Maharaj left Anand and arrived in Vartal. Here Maharaj assembled the congregation by the banks of Gomti Lake. Everyone looked very, very moodless. Maharaj, and, Maharaj then addressed the assembly. Today, we have won the battle. Through tolerance, we have enhanced our pride and reputation. Maharaj's word calmed their agitation. Simple, very simple story. Due to Bhagwan rising <coughs> throughout the lands of Gujarat, many, many opposers were ready to attack Bhagwan, his sadhus, and his devotees. And even at that time, many, many santos were attacked by brutal, brutal, you can say cruel people. And and they're beaten until blood came out. They're beaten until they were bruised. Yet, santos tolerated. They did not do anything. And due to that tolerance, Due to the tolerance of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and his santos and bhaktos, today we're able to live peacefully here in maybe here in the United States or in India or anywhere. We do not have to tolerate because they have tolerated for us. We should be able to see that and appreciate it. Worse comes to worse if we look at a situation, a live example. If we are doing the Tilak Chanlo in school, number one, Bhagwan and Puja Guruji will become happy in us. But on one side, there is the happiness of Bhagwan and Guruji where, where we cannot see it. And on the other side, there is the physical, social pressure life where if I do this Tilak Chanlo, what will my friends think? What will what will the people, what will all the popular kids in school think about me? What will my teachers think? And when we do perform the Tilak Chalno and go, we get insulted. Words are thrown at us. Nothing more than words. Yet, if we're unable to tolerate, then how can we be called a devotee? Not only that, in the time of Bhagavan Swaminarayan, not words, but sticks were, were beaten, were taken and beaten. People hit Santos, beat them up brutally, bruised them, made them bleed. Yet Santos did not say anything. So as of right now, we are not tolerating anything at all because they have tolerated for us. So in this story, Bhagwan says that we have won the battle. Every day, we have to win a battle in our life, tolerating from anything and everything, from our mind, from the inside, from the outside, from every circumstance that we approach may it be bad or may it be good. We have to tolerate. And if we do, then one day, Bhagwan will tell us that you have won the battle Come to my Akshardham now. Bhagwan will become pleased on us. And reminding of Bhagwan, our Puja Guruji, ever since he was born, till this time, he has tolerated in his life. If I can give you a small example. Right now, <clears throat> for the past 
seven years, he has been at the chairman level of controlling 1,500 temples under the Vartal Diocese. He was elected and he won and he's maintaining this. Such a level in the Sampradaya as a top sadhu. Not only you can say in this polit political view, but also in the view of saintliness, in the view of spiritual, you can say, level. Even right now, he is living in the village of Loya, a remote village where Bhagwan Swamiran performed the Sakotso, the village of Sudakachar. He is living on the outskirts of a village, building a grand temple for the happiness of others and living in such a condition where there is not availability of hot water. There is not availability of AC or heating. And it's such a simple place that we can imagine that how much tolerance is this great saint doing for us. It seems like, just like how Bhagwan Swami Narayan and his Paramansos and his devotees, they tolerated for us, and due to that, we are able to sit peacefully. Buja Guruji is tolerating for us now, so that in the future, the sentos and devotees to come will, will and can sit peacefully, can worship Bhagwan without any kind of disturbances. And due to that, he is tolerating. This is just one example. Every day, each and every moment, there's always something. May it be a phone call of a devotee saying that this has happened, I am very pained. This has happened, please help me out. Or may it be a situation where Puja Guruji gets physically some kind of health problems, some kind of issues with his body. And may it be the problems of outside, cruel people, hatred, jealousy towards Puja Guruji, trying to take him down from his works. All these obstacles, yet our Puja Guruji stays God-centered centered, and lives a simple and virtuous life for the happiness of others, not his happiness. He has never done anything for his happiness, but for the happiness of others. And even today, when we look at the santos of Puja Guruji, there are santos that tolerate day in and day out of numerous problems, obstacles for the happiness of others. If we cannot see this, then who are we to call ourselves devotees? If we cannot see Puja Guruji's daya, compassion, then how can we be called followers of Bhagwan Swami Narayan? In the Vachnamrut, Gatada, 1st chapter, 27th Vachnamrut, Bhagwan states, Since it is God who resides in all of the Indriyas of such a Sant, that Sant is able to empower the Indriyas of all beings in the universe. Therefore, such a Sant is the sustainer of the world. His greatness lies in the fact that he tolerates the insults delivered even by in insignificant people. Only those who are forgiving in this manner should be considered to be extremely great. This is a very, very great quality of an ekantik sadhu. It cannot be possessed by any ordinary person, but if I can give you an example of Bhagwan, what he has said, suppose that you are a king of a kingdom. You ruled millions and millions of acres of land and you had millions and millions of people underneath you 
ready to do as you say. You had all the luxuries of the world. And one mere servant, the lowest of the lowest caste, he comes up to you and he says that you are the worst king in history. There is no one that can rule worse than you. Would you be able to tolerate such an insult if you were the king? Those who are saying yes, I want to tell you that we would not be able to say yes unless we are put in that situation. But most definitely we can understand and we can probably contemplate that we would say no because it's such a hard task to do that after going very high, if we look at someone low and if they insult us, we would definitely become furious. But such an ekandik sadhu, our Puja Guruji, he tolerates insults from even the most insignificant people. If I can give you an example, and you've heard it many times, Puja Guruji was on uh, inside the city of Vadodara, and uh, his driver must have hit a motorcycle, uh, person riding a motorcycle in front of him, and just n nudged him, and the person fell down, got back up, nothing had happened, nothing, no big deal. The person did not even know who Guruji was, his greatness. He went to Puja Guruji's window side seat and slapped Puja Guruji in his face. All the santos and bhaktos came out and were ready to take this man apart. Yet Puja Guruji said, sit back inside the car. He sat back inside, all the santos sat back inside the car. Puja Guruji told the driver to give this person how much ever money he needed to fix the repair and more on top. The person, uh, the driver gave him the money and the person left. And Puja Guruji was normal. As is, nothing had happened. This is the greatness of a true sadhu. He, he tolerated so much pain. Yet, there was nothing in mind that kept him that, you know, I am such a sadhu. I have this status, nothing. This is the greatness of our Puja Guruji. One has to just see the incidences in his life. One has to go and experience him. And I encourage all of you who are listening, Puja Guruji is coming here June 3rd to come and visit him. Come and experience his greatness. Come and see how great he really is. And, and, and by seeing this, One's life will change. One's life will be filled with the joy of Bhagwan, because Bhagwan resides in him. Moving on, another story that also resembles tolerance is by a nun sant, an elite sadhu in the time of Bhagwan Swami Narin, by the name of Gunati Tanan Swami. Swami was touring, this, touring the Sodat region with a group of sadhus. In some villages where the devotees resided, they were honored and welcomed, whereas in others, the unfriendly folks insulted and persecuted him, them. Once Gunatitan Swami arrived at the village of Juna Savar, Uga Kuman, the village chief, hated the Swami Narayan sect. On hearing the news that sadhus had arrived, Swami and Santos, Uga Kuman became inflamed with anger. He and his men insulted them, thrashed them, and drove them out of the village. The sadhus unresistingly hobbled their way to the village lake. The extent of their persecution was evident from their bleeding wounds and sore bodies. When the village women came to fill their pots, with water, they were moved by the cruelty that the sadhus had been through. Out of the compassion they uttered 
How can God bless the, the darbar with a child when he persecutes such innocent sadhus, such merciless village chief shall always remain childless. Meaning, Uga Kuman did not have a child. He had a curse. And due to that, every time he did have a child, the small child would die in a short period of time. So the woman, the women from a distance, observing that the sadhus were beaten by Uga Kuman and his men, pretty much cursed them, cursed Uga Kuman and said that how could such a person re, uh, receive a child due to his cruel behavior like this? When Gunatitan and Swami came to know of this, he and the sadhus prayed to Sriji Maharaj to bless the darbar with a child and therefore to have his house graced by sadhus. Gunatitan and Swami, even after being thrashed and beaten by Uga Kuman and his men, he wished for a child to occur. He blessed for a child to occur in the family of Uga Kuman so he could become happy in life. And due to that, Santos can come and do Padramni at his home. It's very fortunate that our Puja Guruji, once, many years ago, a devotee had no child, only had two daughters, and wished upon a child, a male boy, came to Puja Guruji and told him his situation. Puja Guruji said, please perform a satsangi jivan parayan and become the yajman and due to that, your wish shall be fulfilled. By the grace and wish of our Puja Guruji, a child was born into the family of that devotee. And right now, the child is 18 or 19 years, ago, 19 years old, all due to the sankalp, all due to thought of our Puja Guruji. In the same exact manner, Sadguru Gunatitan and Swami wished for a child for Uga Kuman. Let's see what happens. And Gunatitan and Swami's prayers were answered. Even at an old age, Uga Kuman fathered a baby boy. A baby boy. Several, several years later, when Gunatitan and Swami was passing through the outskirts of Junasavar, Uga Kuman's eight year old boy caught hold of Swami's finger and brought him and the sadhus home. Gunatan and Swami remain, reminded Uga Kuman, Dalbar, do you remember that several years ago you had beaten us and expelled us from the village? However, on hearing that you were childless, we prayed to Sriji Maharaj to bless you with a son. And by the grace of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, you have been blessed with a boy. Uga Kuman re repented for his ruthless act and prayed for forgiveness. So, once Gunathyan Swami heard of this, Swami, at that time, forgot totally about it, the whole incident. He tolerated eight years ago, and at that time, he tolerated his forgiveness of such an insignificant person. And due to that, he took the fold of a household devotee and became a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. These are the stories in the time of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, how Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself in Sadguru Gunatitan Swami tolerated. And today, I told you a couple of prasangs of our Puja Guruji, how he tolerated in his life and is tolerating for the happiness of others. So the lesson for today is, number one, tolerate no matter what kind of situation one comes into because we are ultimately the devotees, the followers of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And number two, appreci appreciate those who are tolerating for us like our Puja Guruji and Santos for our happiness. Saying this, my humble Jai Swami Narayan.